Uh, hello everyone. In this short video I'm going to explain you the concept of interlock or interlocking two, two variables with each other. Uh, for that reason I have created a, an empty standard project. I've selected CFC as the programming language and here I will show how to uh, use the interlock function lock which is provided by the OSCAT library. The basic idea here is that we have two input variables, both of them are boolean. And we have two output variables which are boolean as well. The outputs q1 and q2 are interlocked so that only one output is set to true at a time. So we cannot have both of the outputs set to true at the same time. One could be true when the other one is an example for this would be the, the, the elevators in which if the door is open we cannot have the cabin moving or if the cabin is moving we cannot open the door or the control of motors in the forward or reverse mode could be also uh, another example for this in this function block which is provided by OSCAT we also have a third input which is called TL and it is indeed the lock time. In this case there will be a dead time between the two outputs. So if the first output was true and it becomes false, after a given amount of time which is determined by the third input, the second output could become true if the corresponding input is true. Uh, let me show you how we can use this in codices since it comes from the uh, OSCAT library, I need to add it uh, into my project. I have it already here. Then within my programming environment if I insert a box and here I just can look for interlock and it's this one, basic.interlock and here you can also see it, uh, some details regarding the function block. Pressing enter and I need to uh, instantiate it and here we go. So you can see that we have a function block which receives three inputs and it provides us two outputs. Let me assign inputs and outputs so we need two boolean inputs and one time input. Uh, let me call it dead time. And I'm going to determine the initial value of one second for the time, for the dead time. And I also need to Uh, create two boolean inputs, input 0, 1 and input 0, 2 I call them and two outputs, output 0, 1 and output 0, 2 all of them are boolean okay so now I can connect the inputs to the block, input 0, 1 input 0, 2 this is our the time and for the output I can connect this to output 0, 1 The first output, uh, output zero one. Yes, I have it there. And the second output as output zero two. 
let me set the online mode into oh, okay it's already in the simulation mode uh, let me also add a simple visualization to the project so it becomes easier to understand the, the operation of the system what I want here is to put two uh, switches to simulate two inputs and two pilot and to simulate two outputs and for that I just use this uh, deep switches and ramps so the first one should be associated with input 0 1 the second one with input 0 2 and the pilot lamps with output 0 1 and output 0 2 I guess now we can try to see Uh, uh, the operation in action hopefully there are no errors the program is quite simple and here you can see that initially all of the inputs are false two inputs are false as a result the outputs are false if I uh, now switch the first input to true the first output becomes true now if I switch the first input true, we see that the second output does not become true and the second the first output becomes false as well. So in this case we see that when both of the inputs are true, both of the outputs becomes false and when we switch one of the indeed one of the inputs from true to false the other output becomes true after the given amount of the dead time so indeed this is the, the way in which the interlock provided by the OSCOT library works so it, it doesn't indeed accept two uh, true inputs uh, at the same time whenever it's the case both of the outputs become false I guess we can have a look inside the function block it is developed using the structured text programming language and you can see that it's quite straightforward there are two after day timers T1 and T2 which uh, receive the inputs I1 and I2 are the inputs as their input the preset time comes from the that time that we have set and here the outputs are set uh, by referring to the corresponding inputs and the negated output of the other of the day timer I guess you can go through this on your own and determine uh, how the interlock which is programmed here works I also want to uh, show you how we can indeed develop our own interlock function block in the CFC programming lang uh, language yeah. for that let's add a POU let's call it my interlock and I'm going to develop it as a function block with CFC as the programming language so similar to the Uh, similar to the function block that we have used from the OSCOT, we need to have these as the input variables, these variables as input variables. So I just copy and paste them here. As the output variable, we need to have these two. Output variables, we need to have this and uh, we would need yeah, to use two after day timers as well okay 
now we, we are ready to implement it we need two inputs indeed we need three inputs i1 i2 and tl so each one of i1 and i2 should uh, provide the input to an after delay timer T1 and T2 as we already have declared them here so T1 receives the input from the first input T2 receives the input from the second input and in terms of the preset time, both of them receive the value from the TL. And this is how to do it. Uh, now, for the outputs, to generate the outputs, we need to create the outputs. We need to use some uh, AND block. For the first one, the input of the end comes from the first input and the negated output of the second after the timer. I can just negate it here. We need to negate only one end, otherwise uh, the negation will not uh, have the desired effect. Yeah? We will lose the negation if we do it two times. And for the second one, we need to connect it to the output of the first after delay timer. Now we need to determine the outputs. For the first one, we call it Q1, and for the second one, it is called Q2 and that's all that we need here. So this is indeed the, the similar uh, implementation of the interlock using CFC. So it, indeed it should uh, do the same job for us. What we can do here is that we can now insert a box here Uh, find out our my interlock and here this is indeed the function block that we have implemented you see that we have two inputs for the boolean inputs and one time input and we have two outputs you can just connect the inputs and the time input to the same variables and as the output variables we can let's create two new outputs so I call it out 0 1 it should be boolean out 0 2 again boolean and in the visualization now I can also uh, introduce another set of pilot lamps where they refer to instead of output they refer to out 0 1 and out 0 2 and that's it so now the pilot lamps should behave uh, similar to each other Let me run the program. So initially the inputs are false. Turning the first input true, the corresponding output become true as well. And for the second one, we see that uh, the exact behavior. If the bo if both of the inputs are true, then the outputs are false. And after one second, you can see that 
the corresponding outputs become true. So indeed you, you see that the interlock function block that we have created using CFC and the one which is provided by the OSCAT library developed in structured text are performing exactly the same job. Again, the examples that we can have here would be the the elevator where we don't want to have the cabin moving while the door is open or vice versa and also we don't want to to run the motor in the forward and reverse directions at the same time so this could be another example as well alright so that's all for this video I hope you have enjoyed watching it please don't hesitate to uh, contact me please share the video with your friends and support me in developing more in preparing more videos for PSC programming using Codices. Thank you for watching and see you next time.